We have seen the use of limit first in taking limit of the difference quotient to get the derivative of a function. Then we also learned the three conditions of the continuity of a function involving limit. Now we will combine our understanding on the two concepts to define the differentiability of a function. So what is differentiability? Differentiation is the process in obtaining the derivative dy dx of or f prime x of a function y function of x. So differentiability is the condition for the derivative of function to exist. Or we can also say the derivative of a function exists if it is differentiable. Furthermore, to define the differentiability condition, uh, we go back to what we have discussed about the derivative. We have proven that the derivative of f uh, at x null exists if and only if the limit of delta y per delta x when delta x approaches to zero uh, exists at x equal to x null. Or uh, we can write it. We can write this statement in short like this. And uh, we also have proven that uh, the limit of delta y per delta x is just the limit of the difference quotient. And let us denote this uh, limit and difference quotient as the differentiability condition. And we denote this as equation 1. Furthermore, for a function to have a differential, uh, the continuity condition, which is this condition, and we have uh, proven in our last and our previous video, um, this will be a necessary condition for uh, a function to be differentiable. Now we will see how this two condition, the continuity condition and differentiability condition, relates to each other to see the differentiability of a function. Since continuity is the necessary condition for a function to be differentiable, it means that to be differentiable at x equal to x null, the function must first pass, pass the test of being continuous at x equal to x null. To prove this, we shall demonstrate that given a function y equal to fx, its continuity at x equal to x nulls follow from its differentiability at x equal to x null, or equation 1 follows equation 2. Before we prove the relation between equation 1 following equation 2, let us replace first x null with n, x null plus delta x with x, and delta x with x approaching to n. With this condition, equation 1 is rearranged to become this, where um, x null plus delta x is replaced with x, x null is replaced with n, and what about x minus n? Where does it come from? Delta x should be uh, replaced with x uh, approaching to n. Well, the logic comes from the graph that we used um, in the previous video here. Yeah, uh, let's also replace x null here with n and x null plus delta x here with x. So delta x is actually x minus n. So this is where this x minus n uh, comes from. So let's denote this. Um, differentiability condition, the new uh, form into equation 1. Now the continuity condition or equation 2 also uh, experience a rearrangement as follow, um, where x approaching to x null, this should be uh, replace x approaching to n, and fx equals to fn. So this continuity condition is now uh, denoted as equation 2 prime.
Now we are trying to prove that the continuity condition here follows the differentiability condition. So there's another definition that we should make first is that the notation x approaching to n implies that x does not equal to n. So x minus n is a non-zero number. And from the graph, uh, previously we have replaced x null here with n and x null plus delta x with x. So we should replace this also with fn and this with fx. So it is permissible to write the following identity. fx minus fn is equivalent to fx minus fn divided by x minus n multiplied by x minus n. And let us denote this as equation 3. Now the next step, after defining equation 3, let's take the limit of both sides from this equation. What we're going to do is take the limit of this left side and the limit of this right side. This will be the first step and this would be the second step. So from the left side, we take the limit and this is the result from the product rule. We have this result and the end result is this. Then in the right side, we take the limit of this uh, side where x approach to n and from the uh, product rule theorem, we have this result, which from equation 1 prime, remember, this is just equal to f prime n. So we have this result, and the n result is this, f prime n, this is equal to n, and this equal to n, and minus n is equal to 0. 0 times fn is equal to 0. So let's take this as part A and let's take this as part B. If we equate left side and right side, we have the limit of x approaching to n, fx, is just equal to fn. Because limit fx as x approach to n minus fn is equal to 0. This Thus, we have this form, which is actually the same form as the continuity condition. So this is the continuity condition, equation 2 prime. Yeah. Uh, thus, we have proved that the continuity, as shown in here, follows from differentiability, as shown from here. In general, if a function is differentiable at every point in its domain, we may conclude that it must be continuous in its domain. So, although differentiability implies continuity, the converse is not true. That is, continuity is a necessary but not a sufficient condition for differentiability. You have learned about the fundamentals and derivatives. In the next session, you will learn the rules in differentiating various types of functions. So, see you in the next video.